This week on To the Contrary. First, what's next after a history-making election for women? Then, a Supreme Court without Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Bay. Welcome to To the Contrary, a discussion of news and social trends from diverse perspectives. Up first, another year of the woman? When the 116th Congress convenes, it will be the most diverse in U.S. history, with much of that driven by women. It was the, the night of the women, women voters, women candidates, women donors. I think the biggest thing that happened in the elections was that we fill the pipeline. Two-thirds of the winners in House districts that the Democrats managed to flip were women, giving Democrats control of the House of Representatives. Democratic pollster Celinda Lake explains women turned out in record numbers and possibly making up 53 percent of the electorate. The white college-educated women came through in gangbusters. And they voted almost 20 points uh, Democratic. They turned out in record numbers. And they really won the House back, along with people of color. That said, the white non-college educated women we lost by double digits. There were many firsts. The first female Native American U.S. representatives, Deborah Holland and Sharice Davids, who is also LGBTQ. The first Latinas from Texas, Veronica Escobar and Sylvia Garcia. Latina Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez became the youngest woman ever elected to Congress. The first Muslim Congresswomen will be Democrats Ilan Omar from Minnesota and Rashida Tlaib of Michigan. Minnesota Democrat Angie Craig will be the first lesbian mom in Congress. The first African-American from Massachusetts, Ayanna Presley, and Connecticut's first black woman in Congress will be Democrat Johanna Hayes. It's really encouraging to see so many females participating, running for office, but I do see two immediate issues. Amy Rosenthal works on digital media for Republican candidates. Democrats don't really know what their message is moving forward, and they don't have a lot of time to figure out what their messaging is and to turn it into legislative action that's going to yield policy results. These candidates, especially the females who have run and flipped seats, are going to have to do a lot of work to not only, I mean, they've secured their seat now, but they're going to have to do a lot of work to keep it in 2020. There will be 23 women senators up from 22, among them Tennessee's first female senator, Republican Marsha Blackburn, and Jackie Rosen, a Nevada Democrat. Arizona will also send its first woman to the Senate, either Kirsten Sinema or Republican Martha McSally. And women made first-time gains in gubernatorial races, Democrat Janet Mills will be the first female governor of Maine. Republican Christy Nome in South Dakota. Democrats Laura Kelly in Kansas, Michelle Lujan Grisham in New Mexico, and Gretchen Whitmer in Michigan. The controversial Georgia governor's race with Democrat Stacey Abrams remains undecided. Rosenthal says Republicans have to enlist more women voters and candidates. Republicans need to do a better job of recruiting women for higher office. With that being said, Republicans did do a good job flipping some seats, and I don't think enough credit is being given to where we saw women elected. Lake says women donors and women activists were key to the wins this week. Some of the most exciting results that haven't been talked about at all is the degree to which women are catching up as donors. And they are particularly catching up with women candidates, and they are catching up in, because of the new way that people are raising money, more online, more repeat donations. Um, so for most of the women candidates, a majority of their donors were women. So, Representative Don Edwards, um, does Tuesday's election from the end of the week perspective look more like a blue wave, even a pink wave? In fact, it does look like a blue wave that actually built its momentum from Tuesday until now, and it has a pink tinge all the way around it, with uh, two-thirds of the Democratic flips are, um, you know, are, are women. This is a great day for women. Blue trickle. I mean... Trump may have lost maybe 35 House seats, but he's staying even possibly going to be two additional up in the Senate. Um, 
Obama lost 63 seats plus nine, um, six uh, Senate seats in his first midterm. Clinton lost 54 and another six Senate seats. So by comparison, Trump did very well. And you know, it's a diversity wave. What's so fun is that it's the sisters that are making good on the founding fathers' promise for this democracy, e pluribus unum, out of many come one. I love that. It was a pink wave, certainly. But um, I subscribe to more Women Stronger Democracy, and so I was delighted to see the pink wave. I just wish it had more red in it. And uh, predictably, it didn't, because the Republican Party doesn't do anything to get women out of primaries and, and help them out of really any races, because we don't play identity politics. Uh, well, okay. Um, <laughs> that having been said, there were two data points that came out this week, out of this week, that really stuck out to me. The first was that Democratic women c received, were given more money by women donors than men, than Democratic men received, which is amazing, because if we had had Linda Chavez on today, who ran in 86, 88 for Maryland Senate. She said women wouldn't vote for her and women wouldn't give her any money. And that has all turned around. Well, and when then the second... as a Republican, she'd still have a problem because we still do have a problem with getting women through primaries and getting women to give to women Republicans. Mm -hmm. There is still a problem there. And the other point I wanted to make, and I want everybody to weigh in on that one, but also um, women... Uh, W the women, the white women vote only went up by 4%. It's now 39% Democrat. In the Trump election, it was 35. So don't, um, women, don't Democrats still have a whole lot to do to get white women over? Well, clearly, I mean, there was a 20 plus uh, point increase among college educated white women, but among non college educated white women, across the board overwhelmingly, in, even in state races, you look at some of these governor's races, you look at individual House races, they favored um, the Republican. And so I think there is still a lot of work uh, to do there with our white sisters. And how do you do but but, 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 but wait a second. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a second. Black <laughs> why, women, why black white... women went 95, and women of color over 90% mm -hmm. for the... Okay, uh, but and I, I want to get to the heart of okay. this. Why your white women friends, mm -hmm. you um, are, uh, you know, a dying breed, a moderate Republican, or at least you used to be. I'd like to, to say they're hibernating. <laughs> We're going to get them back out. <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. But um, why, uh, why do women continue, Republican women, from your perspective, white women continue to vote Republican? Is it immigration? Is it taxes? Is it, you know, because Two that's... things. All right. Jobs, national security. Absolutely. Okay, trust, I think you're trust, right. They trust yeah. Republicans. Yeah. They trust they Republicans. Do. Great. But you know what great, happened with great. security? I found this just knocking on doors. I knocked on a lot of doors in the last couple of weeks. The women who were, a lot of them independent, had voted Republican, and it was because of this sense of, oh, they're going to be better with my dollar, and they're going to, you know, keep me safe. They started seeing our issues as security issues, like gun safety was very big. Health care was very big. You mean if I have a pre-existing condition, I can't get health care? That's a security threat to my family. Um, but you're also policies. in Northern Virginia, and that's an anomaly for the well, rest of the Well, gun safety. Country. Let's talk about well, gun safety. We did pick up a lot of seats in Virginia throughout and the state. And I'm sure you were yeah. down... I'm sure you were down. I was down in too, Richmond, which when is very I heard red, lot, and they put me in the independent districts. Mm. And, and it um, was a suburban. Di these are suburban, suburban districts, mm -hmm. which we saw across the and, country and so went so toward security, Democrats. Security, you're right, but I think now, now the voter is looking at our. Uh, array of issues as being security issues. I think and you I think brought up are. a great point because look what happened in Georgia with Karen Handel losing to Lucy uh, Lucy Bath. McBath. McBath. Right. McBath. Uh, wonderful woman, former flight attendant and um, a mom of a son lost to gun violence. Uh, she is a and cancer African survivor American. as well. And she's from just Georgia. Really cool. She decided to get up and, and challenge Karen Handel, who I had met earlier on when she decided to run for Tom Price's open seat. And she won that. And Karen was, I liked Karen very much, but I also understand what happened down there and Lucy just brought something different she brought very much not a closeness with Trump she's not close with the Karen got progressively closer and closer with President Trump in a district well, with Karen to start out with was pretty far off the ledge of the right wing of the party uh, to start with I would 
I would not I agree with that. that. I, when yeah. I met her, she was part of a lot of moderate efforts. She had gone across the country, I believe it was with Barbara Comstock, you may know more than me, uh, but they had done a right women tour right now, and she was very much a centrist. Yeah, it was, was over the course of keeping that seat uh, last year that she became very close to Trump, and I, I was worried because I know Roswell, Georgia, which is one of the towns in her district, there are white, younger, college-educated, sub young, suburban young moms like myself that were like, uh-uh, no go. Like, we're not really sure about all this. Well, and that was a nightmare. Biggest, can I say something? Sure. I'm sorry. Can, can no, I say ahead. something what, what, else, too? What, because uh, I think that, you know, when you referenced identity politics, I think part of what happened in uh, 2018 that didn't happen in 2016 is that women's politics were their identities, yeah. and they talked about their life experiences. And then that yeah. Georgia race, it was a very compelling experience that Lucy McBath has, her sure. story, that was very part strong. of her identity Good and point. became part of the politics. Yeah, and likability was, well, well, yeah. was high for that. Her likability was high for that. We've had, what, we've had what, we're the one mom who've been elected after gun violence against a, mm -hmm. a loved one. But, what, but let me ask you this. As long as democratic issues are health care um, and education, uh, education and, and infrastructure and, jobs, and jobs um, what, why, why are they still not getting the majority of the white woman vote? And can they, if de big democratic issues are also... Let's increase support for poor people, which means taxing the middle and upper classes, uh, and immigration, which many of these women, their jobs are being taken away by immigrants who will come in and work cheaper. Well, let me just say this. When you look at the big picture strategy after 2016, Democrats had a choice, and they bet everything on women. They recruited women. They started raising money from women. They started. They did GOTV for two years, put $30 million behind it, and they were plumbing a lot of those women voters, some of them ethnic, African-American. I have to tell you, I they heard, I heard on the radio women. some Republican guy from uh, Southern Virginia complaining about the fact that the Democrats had so much money and the Republicans just couldn't raise. I mean, for so many years when yeah, I covered right. Congress in the so 80s the and 90s, I remember I had a cousin who was a Democratic House member, and I said, you know, Sam, the the, the Republicans are going to, are out raising Democrats by four to one, and he said, good, I hope they have so much money they drown in Right in, but the, now, on, on the now the table yeah. is completely well, turned. Well, on the congressional side it did, but I mean, the main parties, main parties still outraise the Democrats by oh, a they great do. deal. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of deal. money that, you but, know, but, I mean, the, the, the story the was the small races. donors, because I think and women got the, the benefit races. of small yeah. donors and yeah. of women donors. And you know but, that $100 but million, I want to do, $20 donations. Do you think there's anything Democrats can do to win white women voters? At this point, at 39%. Change on their position on jobs and their position on uh, national security. I don't know if that's going to happen. But the health care, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, the fact that they did ride health care when previously they had lost on the issue of health care because they hadn't delivered. It's going to be very interesting to see what they deliver. If they don't deliver the right thing, if they deliver, again, another program that gives you lower premiums and outrageous deductibles, you know, they're going to lose dramatically in the next election. But look at what they what they delivered on. They delivered on telling the American people that we are going to continue protecting pre-existing conditions, that we're going to lower the, the cost of... the Republicans would have done the same. That, but they hadn't, they, and they had and voted the against it. And I think people it. saw through that. They thought they knew that it no, was not authentic. Republicans and that did the not campaign on it, which well, was a problem. Well, they the have been Republicans out wanted to campaign on, on Obamacare. Give me a break. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think, I, I think that health care was a huge issue. It was. Democrats Democrats right. ran and won on right. that, and they ran and won in places like Oklahoma and yeah. Kansas and, uh, you know, upstate in, in Illinois. Amazing. These were yeah. really Kansas amazing that, uh, victories. That, uh, that, Sharif uh, Davis. A, a, a woman, you know, Native American out lesbian won a congressional seat in the in the heartland. That's you, pretty amazing. And you the know what I love about this woman. is that with all the studies that are done in the economy about the effect that women in leadership have on companies, on society, everywhere, is that women are a sustainability play. Because mm -hmm. women care about their communities, care about their families, and that's kind of what you're seeing. Look at Virginia last year when they elected those 11 out of the 15 wins there were women. The very first thing they did was they said, we are going to take that Medicaid expansion money. This will help our families. That's the very first thing they did. I see it'll be interesting to watch because women are now more than 30 percent, almost just shy of 50 percent of the Democratic caucus in the House. They're unfortunately, because there are so many 
uh, men on the Republican side. They're not 30 percent yet of the Congress. But there will be an agenda coming from the Democrats that's going to reflect a need for jobs and health care, those things that would Demo be sustainability Why for didn't families. Democrats run? I mean, I, I need this is clearly not a normal presidency. This is clearly, and many people think, uh, many experts have said that he, that President Trump is not mentally fit for office. Democrats didn't run on that. Why well, not? <laughs> I know people have been making plans to leave the country if he's reelected in 2020. Why? Th that seemed to be a very well, you know, I issue. find that's a very inside the beltway kind of conversation. Um, I traveled to something like 40 states over the last year and a half. People were talking about their health care. They were talking about infrastructure and education, uh, their jobs, things that affect them in communities. And I think Democrats are really smart to stay focused on running on those Great. issues because this narrative uh, uh, is just not part of the conversation. Now, accountability and oversight is, and that should be part of the Democrats agenda, but we also need to fix some roads and bridges. Okay, okay. I, got, I got a lot of issues I want to get okay. through, and we only have four more minutes. <laughs> okay. Nancy Pelosi, is she going to become Speaker? I think so, and I'd vote for her if I were there. <laughs> yes, because yes, so. the Republicans will make sure she is. <laughs> <laughs> so for them, it's a great thing. Oh, yeah. A great Thank target. You. It's a gift. For, Thank you. It's for, a gift. Except she will, she will do this term and step down and in 2020, so she it won't be. Uh, and build, I, some, so and build some leadership. And build and some I'm leadership. And I'm sorry, but you know, she is a woman leader. She has just had a great success. I think she deserves it. And it's no accident that she the billion the dollars that, <laughs> yeah, the, that's what he said. that the uh, Republican Party has put behind vilifying her, you know, we saw what it did to Hillary Clinton, to other women leaders. Uh, you know, the fact it's that a her. a billion dollars? It was over the course of her career, it's been a yeah. billion dollars. And, you know, so it's no surprise she has bad branding, uh, especially as far as Republicans And are concerned. look at all the money the Democrats and the national media have put behind vilifying, uh, you know, Donald Trump and you saying, oh, people say he's unfit for office. Come on. Did, did you watch, did did you watch the live Let thing with him Let me finish. in the office Let me finish. with, Let me with finish. Kanye West? Let me finish. <laughs> he sat there. He didn't, he didn't. Or the press he wasn't, conference. That was I mean, Kanye. That was him. Conference. Or him arguing but like a six-year-old with reporters about can I finish? What the, you know, that the, the press is mean can to I him. Can I finish? Not can understanding. Can I finish? Just because his rhetoric isn't polished does not mean he's mentally it's unfit. More, it's, you can see tremendous results. That's why Republicans are sticking by him, because he's actually keeping his, his promises. His rhetoric is dangerous and people are going to die. I'm no, just going to put it out there. Yes, they no, are. He's not. inciting violence against no, people that no, are people not. of color, and we have Reporters. children in detention you know centers, no, and I'm not, not going to take it anymore. I do not stand with this Republican Party that puts up with him. Well, I'm fine with Republican policies. I love them. But this man came in and hijacked the party. We are moderates. We don't believe in this. This the, really far-right stuff he does and not denouncing white nationalism, I have had it with him. He has he's, denounced white he nationalism. He has never denounced it. He said yes, he has. Please be truthful, and He has never denounced it. I have a rat One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. And he absolutely has. Rena. Call Arena. it, call it, Arena. and now I am a brown no, woman. No. I am taking great offense to that. Okay. He has never he has called it. Call him up. Call him up and tell him to do it from the bully pulpit. He has never he done has it. Done that. People are going and to after die. After the show, I, I will divide you the evidence. I'm not going to take any more from Republicans. And, and, and up with him. He has never say, denounced David Duke. First of all, the two of you talking, it has to stop. Right. Okay. <laughs> he's a white Secondly, nationalist. I'm not going to sit here and let that be not a white nationalist. That he's not. Well, there are millions of Americans who have that impression, and he won't. Uh, you've carried his water on he a lot has, of things, yeah. but when you have a Easy brown for you to Republican say when you don't have here, brown skin. Say, right, but she's telling been, you that she he is hates a, brown She's a friend, people. but she is a never You're Trumper. my friend, but you don't yeah. live with the, what I have to live with when I'm I brown and I'm getting that. people telling me going back to my country. I understand. What country is that, West Virginia? I understand that. I'm just as American as any white person. I understand that. And I'm just as Republican as anyone else. I understand that. I've well, carried the I'm, water for all these people, and okay. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We got you. your message. Now you can finish it. Bottom line is, he has denounced white supremacy and white nationalists by name, called them out by name. When? when? Over his career, oh, I don't well, know, probably please. about 10 or 12 times. Charlottesville, yes, he had a part of that that was bad, but he called them out by he name. He said both sides are good them. people at Charlottesville. He, he, was, he was saying there are good people on both sides because he was referring to no, people that... Anne. He was referring to people that were there, not the ones carrying torches, the ones that were there to defend the statues, not on the basis... But the point Why is, does there have to be a, can I, a, a micro-explanation for everything? Can I finish? He never denounced can I finish? white nationalism. Can I finish? Uh, wait, uh, he I'm, did. You're not answering the question. He did. Truthfully. He, oh, I absolutely am. He did. However, 
what you all are saying points out the fact that he did it badly. And the message gets lost because he says one thing off and that becomes you the story. You should tweet it. You should tweet it. Like yeah, he tweets everything. He else. has tweeted it. And no. I will provide you. Okay, please. Let's I'll, I'll give you the stuff let her, afterwards. Let her I'll give you the finish. stuff after. And yes, he, he misspeaks and he says things in a, in a way that allows people to interpret the wrong way. He does have to be more clear in the future. He is not a racist. All right, I want to get to the, the Dems now, ha and your husband's in Congress, you were in, in the House. Um, they now have subpoena power starting in January. How are they going to use it? Well, you know, I think they're going to have you know, an issue here because, you know, one of the things they get is oversight and the other things, you know, is an agenda. And what we learned in all those races where people did not make it about Donald Trump, they did make it about infrastructure, health care, the issues. There's an agenda there that they're just raring to get to. And they're going to look for opportunities. I think the first thing you're going to see is an infrastructure bill. That'll bring jobs. That'll bring consensus with Republicans. That's what you'll see. Now, yes, there will be oversight. We need to see this president's tax uh, forms, and you know, like any other president in American modern American history, um, certainly there will be oversight. That's the role of Congress vis-a-vis -vis the federal agencies. All right, we are done with this segment. We're out of time. I wish we had more. Let us know what you think. Please follow me on Twitter at Bonnie Herve. From women dominating the elections to the liberal lioness of the Supreme Court. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was hospitalized earlier this week after falling in her office and breaking three left ribs. Although she's expected to recover fully, her injury brings the focus back to her age. Although she has survived diseases such as colon and pancreatic cancer and has previously broken ribs, the 85-year-old had never before missed a Supreme Court meeting. Now she missed Kavanaugh's investiture and possibly more. So, Megan Byer, um, what would a Supreme Court without uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg be like? Well, I, it would be a terrible thing for, uh, you know, there'd be no balance left. Uh, but I don't think we have to worry about that. Uh, anyone who knows anything about the notorious RBG uh, knows that she's got a great will. She intends to stay in for at least another five years, like her predecessor, the uh, justice who she replaced. And uh, as I understand it, as of today, she's out of the hospital. So let's not envision something that we don't have to envision. You know, you have predicated the Roe versus Wade remaining the law of the land, even if a very um, full of holes version of it is still the law of the land, uh, as being predicated now on Justice Roberts switching. Or uh, Kavanaugh uh, doing what he told Susan Collins he would do in that is upholding precedent, yeah. Well, you can say that you're going to do it, but then when you're actually there, right. it's sometimes your job, or you can make it your job. Right. Ginsburg to could be the first it. one. But if she goes, could could be the first seat that could possibly t truly tip the. Court. How do you feel about that? Uh, remains to be seen who they put up. Um, I mean, obviously, <laughs> if they do. Excuse me, I'm just confused. Well, you think he, he said he's already said mm -hmm. he won't appoint anybody but a justice who will overturn Roe v. Wade. He's also said he won't ask them what their position is before he nominates them. And you don't think he's going to know? He probably will know, or at least they'll think they know. Um, my point is, if they do overturn Roe, if that's what happens, she goes and they overturn, the party will pay a price, just like they did back in 89 through 92. So it's up to them. Donna? You know, I've been thinking about this. First of all, I think that um, RBG is going to be around for the next several years. and um, She works out every day. She does. And, and also, I think missing a, a you know, a, an oral argument or missing a, a meeting uh, doesn't impact what she's going to be able to continue to do on the court. I think that's a little bit overblown. I will say, um, the, to me, the, da the next danger is that everybody that comes off of that Federalist Society list comes off of it for a reason, and the president has said that, and I believe him. And whether he asks them or ask a, a nominee or not, um, I'm pretty clear that he is looking to make sure that Roe v. Wade is overturned. Do you believe Kavanaugh will, uh, will uh, vote to uphold Roe, and do you believe? 
Justice Roberts will switch, if necessary, to keep it the law of the land. Well, I and think... Yes or no, because yeah, we got to uh, go. No. <laughs> okay. That's it for this edition. Please follow me on Twitter and visit our website, pbs.org slash to the contrary. And whether you agree or think to the contrary, see you next week. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry.